Hi guys, we continue now with the discussion on the real and personal defenses which we began in uh, part 6.1, okay? So uh, here in part 6.2, we'll continue with a special discussion on certain defenses. Uh, I'll be identifying whether they're real or personal and uh, giving some situations for their proper application, okay? So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Please share as well to those who may need it uh, and tell them to subscribe, okay? Now, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law, okay? So let's begin with section 15, which deals with an incomplete and undelivered instrument okay in other words there is no authority to complete the instrument and there is no authority to negotiate it why okay because uh, it has not yet been delivered remember delivery in order to be effectual there must be physical delivery or transfer with intent to transfer the instrument okay which is why i discussed section 15 before uh, section 16 before going to 14 15 and 13 okay remember the general rule that every contract on a negotiable instrument is incomplete and revocable until delivery of the instrument for the purpose of giving effect to it okay so if there's no delivery there the there is no contract yet on the instrument and it is revocable okay so more so when the instrument is incomplete okay i discussed the nature of incompleteness when i talked about section 14 okay so now in case of an incomplete and undelivered instrument it is not a valid contract in the hands of any holder okay whether it's a holder in due course holder not in due course okay it's not a valid in the hands of any holder against any person whose signature appears on the instrument before delivery okay so in other words no before the delivery of the instrument if it's incomplete and the party has his signature on that uh, instrument then it is later on delivered to uh, someone else and uh, further negotiated then this party who did not complete it and whose signature appears before it was delivered it can raise as a defense this section to uh, to, uh, to evade payment on the instrument okay now as i said this is a real defense and it can even be used against a holder in due course okay it is uh this uh defense may be used to prevent a holder in due course or a holder not in due course from claiming payment on this instrument because remember no it's not a, the instrument is not a valid contract in the hands of any holder okay it um, may be enforced against whose party those parties no the instrument however may be enforced against those parties whose signatures now appear after it was delivered okay before delivery if your signature is on the instrument okay you do not intend to be bound no because you did not complete it you did not deliver it but after it has been delivered and people negotiate the note from one person to another they put their signature etc they intend to be bound and now they are also bound under their warranties okay the, they warrant that the instrument is genuine and in all respects what it purports to be etc etc because of those warranties they can now be held liable after the delivery before delivery not liable it's a real defense after delivery they cannot invoke the defense they are liable okay uh, best example in this case is where a person, a maker or the drawer makes an instrument and he keeps it in his drawer. Okay, let's say it's not complete. No, there is a blank on the amount or whatever. No, So he keeps it in his drawer and someone steals it. No, In that case, the maker or the drawer did not intend to create a valid contract with anyone. So therefore, the law says it is not a valid contract in the hands of any holder against any person whose signature appears on that instrument before delivery okay now when it comes to uh, sections 14 15 16 i highly suggest that you memorize these okay because uh, it will help you in your exams whether it be in school the board or the bar okay now uh let's go to uh absence or failure of consideration okay this is under section 28 
and the uh, absence or failure of consideration are two different grounds, no? Uh, but they are both personal defenses, okay? When we talk about absence of consideration, it's simply the total lack of consideration. Let's say an instrument is uh, cr created uh, in payment of land, no? Land is the consideration, no? But the land really does not exist, okay? So there's uh, absence of consideration, okay? In which case, the immediate parties cannot enforce uh, the instrument, but a holder in due course can. Okay, remember, it's only a personal defense, okay? It uh, only applies, it can only be invoked against immediate parties or remote parties who have knowledge of the infirmity or defect, okay? When we talk about uh, failure of consideration, this is simply the failure, refusal to comply or perform with the obligation no so let's say the in the previous example the negotiable instrument was uh, created or issued in payment of land and this time the land does exist however there was a failure to deliver the land no or transfer the land okay so in this case that is a mere failure of consideration and it is also a personal defense okay uh, a holder in due course can still enforce the instrument against the party who raises the de this defense. Why? Because again, it's a personal defense. Okay, it can only be raised against uh, immediate parties or the holders not in due course. Okay. Now, uh, what if there is partial failure of consideration? Okay, that is uh, also a uh, partial defense. Okay. So let's say uh, the instrument was issued for three sacks of rice and only two-thirds meaning two sacks out of the three uh, sacks of rice are delivered then the instrument can only be enforced up to uh, two-thirds of the value okay there is a uh, defense partial defense of failure of consideration as to the uh, uh, sack of rice which was not delivered okay now let's move on to material alteration which is uh, sections 124 and 125 Okay? And a material alteration is simply any alteration which changes the date, the sum payable, the time for payment, place for payment, the number of parties, relations of parties, the medium or currency in which it is to be paid, adds another place of payment, or any other uh, uh, particular which alters the effect of the negotiable instrument no so in other words it's an alteration which changes the liability of the parties okay it involves a uh, physical alteration no there has to be something that is uh, altered okay so uh, this is a partial real defense why because the holder in due course no who is not a party to the alteration can still enforce the instrument according to its original tenor meaning uh, original tenor meaning what the instrument is before it was altered okay and the uh, um, material alteration no by a party or a stranger okay in case of a stranger it's known as spoliation okay the effect of an alteration by a party or a stranger of is has the effect of avoiding the instrument okay the instrument is now void except against the party who made authorized or assented to the alteration okay of course if he was the one who made the alteration the instrument can be enforced against him if he assented he gave his consent he knows of it he, then the instrument can be uh, uh, enforced against him and the same goes for a party who authorized such alteration he intends to be bound okay now, uh, in, in the cases uh, that are not where the party assents or makes or uh, authorizes the alteration, no, the effect of the material alteration is to discharge the negotiable instrument, okay? The instrument is now discharged, okay? All, par all prior parties who did not give their consent to the alteration are now also discharged. Why? Because they did not give their consent to the uh, alteration. Okay? Of course, a party to be bound has to give his consent. Please just review the principles on 
oblicon, no? especially on consent. Okay? Now, does it matter whether the alteration is favorable or unfavorable to the party who caused the alteration? It does not matter. Okay? Because the intent of the law is to preserve the integrity of the instrument. Okay? If there is an alteration, again, it is avoided. Okay? Except it may that except that it may be enforced against the party who made authorized or assented to the alteration. Okay. Now, uh, if the alt what if the altered uh, instrument is uh, negotiated to a holder in due course? Okay. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. The holder in due course may enforce the instrument according to its original tenor. Okay, meaning that uh, what did the, or the instrument originally said, he can enforce it up to that amount. Okay, now uh, when we talk about material alteration, this is different from forgery because forgery, which I will be discussing later, involves a fraudulent intent. Okay, when we talk about material alteration, this can involve innocent alterations and spoliation, no? But uh, forgery applies to signatures that are made without uh, authority. Okay? Uh, so, uh, I'll talk about forgery in a bit. Okay? Just take note as a final, uh, final note no, in, or tip in case of material alteration. In case of checks where there is a serial number, that is not a uh, material alteration. Okay? It's a common question. No? The serial number is not a material alteration. Why? It's not an essential requisite of negotiability. Okay? So, therefore, it's not a material alteration. Okay, now let's go uh, quickly over uh, ultra vires acts. No, I mentioned this at the start of, la of the last video. No, if the ultra vires act is uh, by a corporation, no, is uh, outside of the purposes of the corporation or beyond the power or authority granted by the board, no, then it is voidable no and it is a real defense but if uh, the corporation was given the power to issue the instrument through the board no but it, for, it was issued only for the wrong purpose like for let's say it was supposed to be issued to buy uh, rice but uh, instead it was used to buy uh, um, ps4 games no then uh, in that case that's a personal defense because the corporation really intended to issue an in, an instrument compared to the first case where uh, it's a real defense in which uh, the corporation truly could not issue an instrument and since it did so even though it can't it's a real defense okay because it was not supposed to issue an instrument in the first place now let's move on to uh, section 13 on uh, the insertion of a wrong date now uh, this section 13 is a personal defense okay if the wrong date is inserted the holder in due course of that instrument has a right to regard that wrongfully inserted date as the true date okay why because the fact that a wrong date is inserted does not make the instrument void in the hands of a holder in due course okay so the rules are uh, in section 13 are as follows no where an instrument is expressed to be payable at a fixed period after date is issued undated or where the acceptance acceptance of the instrument payable at a fixed period after site is undated no in those two cases any holder may insert therein the true date of issue in the first case or acceptance in the second case and the instrument shall be payable accordingly okay you try to remember not in my previous discussion that the omission of uh, the date of the making or drawing of the instrument that does not affect negotiability okay why because now the instrument will simply be considered dated as of the time it was issued okay however no section 13 contemplates a situation where the date is necessary to fix or determine the time of maturity or the due date of the note no when it is to be payable okay and the remedy in that case is simply to insert the true date in case of acceptance the date of presentment okay is the true date and not the date when it was actually accepted accepted okay 
And finally, we can go to a very important uh, topic, no? the defense of forgery under Section 23. And forgery here contemplates uh, counterfeiting or any fraudulent alteration of any writing which may consist of the following. First, no? signing another's name with the intent to defraud. Okay? Or it can be alteration of an instrument in name, amount, or name of the payee, etc., with intent to defraud. Okay, and uh, this applies in two cases. No, first a signature, a, a signature which is affixed by someone who does not claim to be an agent, an agent. Okay, and who has no authority to bind the person whose signature is forged. Okay, so it's just some stranger who is not an agent and has no authority. Okay, but the second case is signature by a purported agent. Okay, he's actually an agent or he purports to be an agent but he actually has no authority to bind the principal okay so what are the effects of forgery this is very important okay i suggest you just me uh, memorize section 23 no and uh, learn how to apply it okay first effect of forgery is that when a signature is forged or made without the authority whose signature it purports to be then the signature, not the instrument, the signature is wholly inoperative. Okay? When a signature is forged or made without authority, then the signature is wholly inoperative. Second uh, effect, no? No right to retain the instrument or to give a discharge of the instrument or to enforce payment against any party in the instrument can be acquired through or under such signature okay so you take a look at this no when the, the, if the signature is forged then that then that forged signature is inoperative it does not produce any effects okay and the law explicitly says that that forged signature does not give you a right to retain or hold the instrument okay that forged signature does not give you a uh, discharge no it does not discharge the instrument Okay, and that signature does not give you the right to enforce payment because it is forged. Okay, so the general rule, simply put, no, is that no right or title okay, can be acquired to a negotiable instrument through or under a forged or unauthorized signature. Okay, wala ka nakuha kung forged yan because that party has no right to give you title. Okay, wala kang makukuha sa forger. Exception. When the party against whom enforcement of the instrument is sought, okay, when the party against whom enforcement of the instrument is sought is precluded from setting up the forgery or want of authority. Okay, this is uh, very important, no? Who are these persons who are precluded or stopped, no, from uh, setting up the defense of forgery? Okay, general rule if I'm going to be held liable, I can say no. I'm not liable, I'm not going to pay because that's not my signature, it was forged. Okay, that's how it works. Exception is, I can still be held liable if I am precluded or stopped from claiming the defense of forgery. And who are these people? No, first, no, persons who warrant or admit the genuineness of the signature. No, yung mga endorsers, no, by, by so endorsing, they warrant that the instrument is genuine and uh, in all respect, what, what it purports to be, etc. No? Okay, so because of their warranties, they admit the genuineness of the signature. Okay? Who else? No, another example, persons negotiating by mere delivery. Okay? And also acceptors, they also admit and uh, the genuineness of the signature. Okay? Second, the uh, kinds of people who are uh, precluded from setting up the forgery or want of authority would be those who by their acts, silence, or negligence are stopped from setting up the defense of forgery. Okay? In other words, they had an opportunity to say that no, uh, that is uh, forgery or uh, through their silence, no? They did not object then they are stopped from uh, claiming the defense of forgery, okay? So, uh, there are different rules when it comes to a promissory note or a bill of exchange as well as order instruments and bearer instruments and as to the who is the whose signature is uh, forged, no? 
Okay, let's begin first with promissory notes. Okay, in uh, promissory notes, we have the uh, order instrument and bearer instrument. Now, promissory note can be payable to order. It can also be payable to bearer. And if you remember, in case of bearer instruments, they are negotiable by mere delivery. Okay, so you don't need an endorsement to negotiate a bearer instrument. But an order instrument can be uh, negotiated by endorsement coupled with delivery but it can be converted to a better instrument through a blank endorsement just remember that huh? what if the signature that is uh, forged is the signature of the maker okay in case of an order instrument and the better instrument the rule is the same the maker is not liable because he never became a party to the instrument no his signature was forged so it's not a party to the instrument okay what about uh, endorsers no in case of an order instrument any endorser that is subsequent to the forgery is liable because of their warranty okay? remember if it's after the forgery they warrant that the instrument is genuine since they warrant that they can be held liable and can be made to pay okay now in case of a better instrument endorsers may be liable to persons who obtain the title through their endorsements Okay, but uh, uh, who is the party ultimately liable? Of course, the party who made the forgery is the party ultimately liable, the forger. Now, let's uh, move on. No, what if instead it is the payee's signature that is forged? No, Then both the maker and payee are liable okay, in case of an order instrument. But in case of a better instrument, only the maker is liable. Okay? In uh, case of endorsers, in case of order instruments, endorsers subsequent to the forgery, again, are liable because of their warranties. And in case of a better instrument, the maker is liable because uh, endorsement is not necessary to obtain title. Take note kasi, no, if it's a better instrument, it's negotiable by mere delivery. So the maker does not uh, look at anymore the, the line of uh, transfers, no? from A to B to C to D, whoever, doesn't matter. Because ultimately, it's a better instrument. And whoever bears that instrument can simply go straight to the maker and say, please pay, no? Okay? And of course, even if the pay signature is forged, it is the party who forged, caused the forgery who is ultimately liable, the forger, no? Now let's move on. What if it's the endorser's signature that is forged, no? The endorser whose signature was forged and prior parties, no, the parties who became parties to the instrument before the forgery, okay, like uh, the maker and the payee, they are not liable. Why? Because the forged signature in an order instrument does not transfer any title. Okay. In other words, it cuts off the line of uh, transmission. No. Of course, uh, until it reaches a uh, holder in due course who can now uh, enforce the instrument okay in, in case of a better instrument no but uh, in case of order instrument just remember that uh, the endorser whose signature was forged as well as prior parties like the mayor the maker and the payee are not liable because the forged signature does not transfer any title now when the maker and the parties uh, uh, Make, no, in case of a better instrument rather, no. In case of a better instrument, the maker and the parties, uh, the prior parties to the forgery are liable. Okay? In case of a better instrument. Why? Because in a better instrument, endorsement is not necessary to title. Remember, always remember in a better instrument, it's negotiable by mere delivery. Okay? So any one of them, no, uh, prior to the forgery can be held liable. Okay? Forgery is immaterial because the instrument, in a, the better instrument, is negotiable by mere delivery. In case of an order instrument where the endorser's signature is forged, the endorsers subsequent to the forgery are liable because of their warranties. So you remember how if they endorse, any person who endorses becomes liable because of his warranties. Okay, except of course qualified endorsers, etc. No. Now, in case of a better instrument, what's the liability of an endorser whose signature is forged? 
Okay? The endorser whose signature is forged is not liable to a holder not in due course, but he's liable to a holder in due course. Why? Take note, now the endorsement is not necessary to the title of the holder. I've been repeating this uh, again and again, no? Endorsement is not necessary to title because this is negotiable. A better instrument is negotiable by mere delivery. So even if uh, an endorsement is forged, no, the holder may simply disregard that uh, forgery and go after the other parties by striking out the unnecessary endorsements. Okay, he can even go after the endorser whose signature was forged. No, I'll give you an example to illustrate. No, so let's say. Uh, Oh, si Kung Fu Panda uli, no? He makes a um, uh, better instrument, better promissory note, payable to better to Goku. Okay? Now, Goku uh, endorses it to Gohan. Okay? Gohan now endorses it. Uh, uh, Gohan, no, sorry. Gohan now has the note. And the note is stolen. Okay? It's stolen by Frieza. Okay? It's stolen by Frieza. And now... Frieza endorses the note to sell. How? Because he forges the signature of Gohan. Okay? Frieza endorses the note to sell by endorsing the signature of uh, in, I, Frieza endorses the, the note to sell by forging the, the signature of Gohan. Okay? Now, sell endorses the note to Vegeta and Vegeta negotiates the note to uh, Trunks by mere delivery. There's no endorsement, huh? mere delivery only. Okay, take note that the note is uh, better, it's a better instrument, so it's negotiable by mere delivery, so that was a valid negotiation from Vegeta to Trunks. Trunks holds it by mere delivery, okay? So now let's talk about what happens now. Can uh, Gohan be held liable to Trunks even though Frieza uh, forged his signature when he when Frieza negotiated it to sell yes no Trunks can hold Gohan liable because he Trunks uh, because the endorsement of Gohan is not necessary to Trunks title Trunks has a good title because it's a better instrument okay Trunks uh, it was delivered to Trunks by mere delivery no and that is the valid that is valid a valid transfer okay so we can enforce the note against gohan okay now what about uh si kung fu panda and si goku okay can they be held liable by trunks okay as they are parties prior to the forgery okay yes they are liable they can be held liable by trunks prior even though they are parties before the instrument was forged because trunks can simply strike out the forged uh, in endorsement of Gohan okay yung uh, forgery that Frieza committed in favor of sale Trunks can cross that out okay it doesn't matter anyway because Trunks derived title by mere delivery of a better instrument okay finally Trunks can also enforce the note against Cell and Vegeta because they are liable under their warranties as endorsers remember no when Frieza negotiated to sell, sell endorsed it to Vegeta. Okay, he's liable under his warranty. And Vegeta is liable to sell, uh, Vegeta is liable to Trunks under his warranty in uh, negotiating by mere delivery because they are immediate parties. Okay, and uh, finally, in case the endorser's signature is forged, whether it be an order instrument or bearer instrument, the party who is ultimately liable is the Forger in this case, si Frieza. Okay, now in uh, let's talk about the rules of forgery in case of bills of exchange. Okay, again, uh, there are different rules when order instrument and uh, better instrument. Okay, now what if it is the signature of the drawer that is forged? Okay, in both cases, whether order instrument or better instrument, the drawer is not liable because he never became a party to. The instrument okay now what if in an order instrument the drawee pays okay then he then the draw is now liable no he uh, he suffers or he bears the loss because he admits the signature of the drawer okay 
and in case of a better instrument, the drawer may recover from the, uh, the drawee if he pays may recover from the drawer when the loss is due to the drawer's negligence. Okay. Now, uh, in case of an order instrument, the endorsers subsequent to the forgery are liable because of their warranties. Okay, this, I've been repeating this earlier, no? Just remember, in case uh, the endorser is after forgery, they are liable because of their warranties. And the endorsers may be liable to persons who obtain uh, their title through their endorsements when it uh, comes to better instruments. Because remember, in better instruments, um, you can negotiate it by mere delivery. And if you endorse especially, then just that just means you are now assuming contingent liability. And you can now uh, be held liable on your warranties because of that endorsement. Okay? And finally, of course, the person ultimately liable is the party who made the forgery possible. Okay? Now, what if it is the payee signature that is forged? No? In case of order instruments, then the cut-off rule applies. No? The parties prior to the forged signature are cut off from parties after the forgery. Okay? They cannot be held liable and they can raise the defense of forgery okay in other words the holder can only enforce the instrument against the parties after the forgery okay kumbaga in the example earlier can only be after the parties who signed after the forgery made by frieza okay except prior parties who are precluded from uh, setting up the defense of uh, forgery okay why? Either because of their warranties or representations or their negligence, no? Okay? Now, if it's a better instrument, okay, the drawer is now liable, okay? Why? Because his endorsement is not necessary to pass the title. Again, it's a better instrument, so negotiable by mere delivery, okay? Now, the drawee is liable because he has no privity between the drawer and the payee because the endorsement of the payee, again, is not necessary. Finally, payee is not liable if it was his signature that was forged, okay? Now, what about endorsers? Of course, endorsers subsequent to the forgery of the payee signature are liable because of their warranties, okay? And in case of a better instrument, the endorsers may be liable to persons who obtain title through their endorsements. I mentioned that earlier. And of course, finally, the person uh, party ultimately liable is the forger. Okay, and the final uh, thing to discuss under forgery is what the case where in the endorser's signature is forged, okay? In case it is the endorser's signature that is forged in an order instrument, the endorser whose signature was forged as well as prior parties like the drawer and the payee are not liable. Why? Because the forged signature does not transfer any title. That's for order instruments. Huh? And in case of uh, better instruments, the drawer is liable. Why? Because again, his endorsement is not necessary to pass title in a better instrument which is negotiable by mere delivery. Okay, The forgery is immaterial because it is negotiable by mere delivery. In the case of uh, Drowy, no, in uh, where the endorser's signature is forged, okay, the Drowy will be liable if he paid, okay. However, in case there is a uh, collecting bank, no, or a depository bank, no, in that case, no, like in checks, no, then the Drowy can recover from them because of the warranties of that uh, collecting or depository bank. But if there is none then the drawee will bear the loss. He, so he will be liable and he has to uh, bear the loss, okay? Now, in case the endorser's signature is uh, forged in a better instrument, then the drawee may debit the drawer's account despite the forgery, you know, in spite of the forgery of the endorser. Why? Because the forged endorsement is not necessary to the title of the holder. Okay? Again, 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 a better instrument is negotiable by mere delivery and endorsement is not necessary to the title of 
the holder. Okay, now what about uh, subsequent endorsers? Again, the rule is the same, no? Endorsers subsequent to the forgery are liable because of their warranties, no? That's in, in, that's in uh, order instruments. And in better instruments, the endorser whose signature was forged is still liable. Again, same reason, because endorsement is not necessary to the title of the holder who acquires it by mere delivery since it is a bearer instrument. And finally, the party ultimately liable is the party who caused the forgery or the forger. Okay? So, uh, that's it for... Uh, the defenses, no real and personal defenses, and uh, please take note, memorize uh, sections 13, 14, 15, 16. If you can't memorize 13, so again, just 14, 15, 16, and 23. If you can, memorize also 124 and 125. Okay, so uh, that should do it for a discussion on uh, nego on uh, real and personal defenses. I hope you may have picked up a thing or two, and I hope to see you in the next video. Okay. See you soon. Bye.